in here. Kind of like it in here. What's going on? What's going on here? Giving people a tour. This space is going to be incredible because it's so big and we fit all of our systems, the generator, all the pumps and systems will fit back in here. My name is Matt. Follow along as I turn Duracell, the legendary ocean racing sailboat, into a comfortable cruising home. Welcome back. For the past few months, we've been working on redesigning and building up a better cockpit and stern on the boat by taking advantage of the old sloped transom and making the cockpit bigger and more accessible with a swim step. This week we're taking a big step forward by actually gluing and installing the new side decks that uh, will make the cockpit that much bigger. So it was a really fun project to do to work on this week. We also spent some time down in one of our favorite parts of the boat. So enjoy the episode. Thanks for watching. I had to first build the flat stock that would become the side decks. I'm still using old foam that I messed up when building the doghouse roof. That is turning out to be not as big of a loss as I thought it would be because I'm getting to reuse all this old foam. I vacuum bagged a couple layers to one side of the foam and then flipped the piece over and ripped off the old bad fiberglass. Then I sand prepped the foam. I'm sanding this to get rid of any old epoxy and fiberglass from the bad lamination. If this was unused foam, then I obviously wouldn't need to sand prep. And vacuum bagged a couple more layers of 17 ounce biox to that side. It is heating up pretty quickly here in Port Townsend, so I decided to put up a little shed over the cockpit. This is very temporary and thrown together, and mostly it's just to keep the sun off the cockpit while I work. So this is my original mock-up part for the side deck, and the next step is to cut off this excess hole that I extended up and then after that is cut to a height that is lower than the side deck so what's going to happen is the side deck is going to sit on top of the hole and then I'll tape the hole to the side deck but I have to cut this down to the right height and then I'll cut out the side deck to be a little bit bigger all the way around and then trim it off with the like a router after it is fit into place. After that's done, then I can template and cut out the little baby bulkhead that goes underneath here. I'm using the existing deck forward to trace a line onto the new hole and then measure down the depth of the new side decks and that becomes the cutting line since the side decks are going to sit on top of the new hole. <laughs> Then I used the original mock-up pieces to trace the shape onto the flat stock. I traced them out a couple inches bigger and will route off any overhangs.
Again, I used my long straight edge to keep the new deck in the same plane as the original deck. I'm actually making the, do the new deck a little bit low to allow for another layer of glass plus the fairing and paint that will have to go on the new side decks. After the new side deck was fit into the boat, I fastened it down, but before I glued it, I templated a little baby bulkhead that will be about halfway down the side deck, and that will be there for supporting supporting the deck so when you sit on it, the deck doesn't flex or anything, but it also makes a little locker that will be back there for propane or uh, whatever else we'll need to have a locker for back at the aft end of the cockpit. <laughs> Again, I'm trying to use old parts that I've cut out of the boat to build new parts into the boat. Here, I used the seat back from one of the old cockpit benches to cut out one of the baby bulkheads. I got the side deck fit, fits really well, and I've got this little baby bulkhead that's gonna go right about in the center of it, and it's gonna be the forward section of the, or the forward bulkhead of the little compartment that will house like, probably a propane tank or two. So there'll be a bulkhead there right in the middle, and then there'll be another bulkhead down here at the end, at the aft end, that'll be the aft wall of that little compartment, so. Right now tonight I'm just going to tab in the little bulkhead to the deck and then to the whole side, but not to the to the side deck, on the underside of the side deck. I'm waiting to do that later.
kind of like it in here. What's going on? Excuse me. Yeah, this space is gonna be really cool because they're after we cut out the this old emergency steering like tracking rudder cassette, they'll be they'll be totally open for an engine to be right here. And then tons of room for different systems around it, being like water makers, pumps, and diesel heaters, and just lots of electronics and everything like that. It'll be it'll be a really, really great space. It's not like super easy to crawl around in, but as far as sailboat like engine rooms go, it's incredible. And it this is a watertight compartment. It will be completely out of the living space. So it'll be really quiet in the boat when we're running the engine, for instance, running the generator. What are these? Uh, it's where the rudder attaches to the boat. So these are like sealed kind of bearings. There's no boots or anything on these. Down here, there's like a seal that seals against the rudder. We'll see if we actually, if we can reuse these or not, I'm not sure. The twin wheel, twin rudder steering system is like a traveler. So there's like a traveler that's mounted right here. And the wheels push the traveler from one side to the other and the traveler pushes the tillers that are on the, on the helms. And the, hopefully the autopilots will be integrated into it as well. Redundant autopilots. Yeah, that's a long ways down the road. This space back here is bigger than I thought it would be. So what are you thinking for what will be stored back there? Uh, a uh, life raft. And it will close it will close this so it's totally sealed. Like this will be its own little watertight bulkhead. And right. then that'll be like a perfect little um, yeah, locker for the life raft. It'll be able to be quickly deployed off of the stern. Why do we have to seal it to make it a watertight compartment? Well, because if it, if the if there's a, a life raft back there, it needs to be kind of open so that it can be easily deployed, and so water can be will be able to kind of get in there and get in and out of there. Like, We'll, we'll have to figure some things out as far as like how to drain water and stuff, but we might have to build like a like a molded case for the uh, life raft to go in there. Mm. Are you gonna keep these hatches for access? Uh, I w there will be one hatch. I don't think I'll keep a hatch like that one. I think it'll be a better one than that one to make it a little more soundproof because that's not a very soundproof hatch. And then there will also be a hatch coming from the deck. Not the already existing hatch? It will have to get moved. Uh, yeah, because we've got to build a bench right there. I see. Everything will have to be organized really well in here. But yeah, it'll be awesome. I know how you love your clean, organized, simple systems in the boat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, spent a lot of time in here, I'm sure. I got Yannicka to help me remove the rest of the old hardware that was in the cockpit. A lot of it was through bolted, so one of us had to hold the nut on the inside of the boat while the other one used the screwdriver on the outside of the boat. I'm removing all this stuff for obvious reasons. I will need to remove it for painting and fairing and everything, but also. I'm gonna start thinking about building benches in the cockpit and those things would all be in the way. You ready? Yeah. This 
this one is not coming out. So you might reuse it? I'd like to. Yeah. I mean, it would go something like this. So yesterday I got this side deck glued to the boat. I used thickened epoxy and glued the whole thing down and then I taped it to the underside. Today I'm going to glue in the, the port side side deck and so I'm going to mix up a bunch of epoxy and use my cake dispenser method with the Ziploc bag and lather up all the gluing surfaces with glue, set it down, cove the inside radiuses and then tape the, tape the undersides. Yesterday it was hot and I had to move really quickly. It's nice and chilled today a little bit, so I have a little bit more time with this epoxy. Yesterday was super hot, and the, the epoxy was thin, and I didn't have a lot of time to work. Grab my tape, so I'll be right back. I just finished gluing this thing down, and I've gone over all the seams and used my little coving stick to put nice radiuses with the glue at all the corners. And so now I'm going to tape it. And on this last one yesterday, what I did was I wet out the tapes first and then tried to put them up in the corners, which was a really bad idea because I'm using this 1700, it's just a 17 ounce Biax fiberglass and it stretches and it was all deformed by the time I tried to fit it into the corners. And so this time what I'm gonna do is wet out the, the areas that I'm going to glass, stick it up dry and then wet it out. That's pretty much it. I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna do two, two layers where the hole is connecting to the deck and just one layer where the deck is connecting to like this bulkhead and to the other side deck over here. I'll do the top and the outside corner. Everything on the outside will be done later. I'm just doing the inside right now. So yeah, here we go.
We have a few new patrons to thank this week. Thank you so much to Dave and Ellen. They live in Norfolk, Virginia, and they first started sailing together when they first started dating in high school. They got married and been have having adventures for the last 45 years together. They moved aboard their boat 16 years ago and recently moved aboard a trawler so that they can rebuild their sailboat to get it ready to go long distance cruising. So we look forward to seeing you guys hopefully out there on the water someday. And thank you to Artie. Artie's from Monterey Bay and learned to sail out there in the Pacific, getting to surf and surf sail down big waves. And we're really hoping to get to do that on Duracell one day, sailing to Monterey Bay, surfing in on the waves. So thanks again, Artie. Thank you to George. George lives in what he called an unreasonably beautiful spot overlooking the Pacific Ocean, um, just outside of Christchurch, New Zealand. Um, and George comes from a long line of seafarers and adventurers. He's had a varied career in the maritime industry. He's currently a harbor pilot. He also worked on the Greenpeace ship Rainbow Warrior as the chief mate, um, which is kind of cool because Matt and I got a tour of the Rainbow Warrior when it was in Seattle a few years ago. Yeah. And thank you to Kurt who gets to sail in Montana on Flathead Lake. There's an active racing, cruising, sailing community there. He is restoring a Rossin 26 and is kind of converting himself from a racer to a cruiser. Like me, he likes to spend as much time working on his boat as he likes to spend sailing the boat. So thank you very much, Kurt. Thank you to Doug, who is from BC. He grew up sailing out there and uh, when he was in his 20s had a CNC 30 that he used to cruise around British Columbia with. And now uh, with his young family, he has this really cool little trimaran that he designed from a canoe. And I was very impressed with his design skills. So thank you very much, Doug. Thank you to Guide in Tromsø, Norway. Guide is an aircraft engineer. He also owns and maintains this 32 foot double ender from 1982. He says keeps him busy. Tusen takk guide og hilsen fra Port Townsend. And thank you very much to Diane and Jeff who are from the area and used to have used to cruise around the Puget Sound a lot. They started sailing around here in the 70s. Taught their children to sail around here and uh, now they're looking for another boat to cruise between Puget Sound and Alaska. So we'll look forward to seeing you out here. Uh, in Port Townsend one day, Jeff and Diane. Thank you very much. And if you would like to join our Patreon community, you can find us at the Duracell Project on patreon.com. So you know, when you join the Patreon community, you don't have to watch ads on the videos. So little tip there, I guess, for... <laughs> yeah, and we're also, um, we're also thinking of ways that we can kind of give back to our Patreons more. So that will be coming up soon. Thanks again.